You uh, switch off your camera. I cannot uh, hear you. Mm -hmm. We are uh, in the stream. So, um, good day, everyone. Um, I would like to give the word to my uh, colleague. Um, to Professor Ji Wu uh, from National Space Science Center. Um, uh, let um, Professor speak about science, uh, space science in China and uh, his uh, work. Um, so, dear Professor, the word to you. Should I start? Yes, please. Okay, so uh, uh, good evening, or good day, or good morning, uh, everybody coming uh, all over the world. Uh, I'm very happy to be invited to speak to you on this uh, very uh, uh, memorial day that uh, Cosmonauts Gagarin has been uh, in space, uh, the first human beings in space for 59 years. So uh, this is a very uh, um, interesting and uh, very important uh, uh, event uh, for us to uh, talk space. So today I will talk uh, about uh, space in China, uh, space science in China, uh, because that is the area I am working. Uh, I will first uh, introduce uh, very br briefly on um, uh, let me see, uh, I can turn the page. So uh, uh, very briefly on the ancient uh, Chinese uh, history uh, concerning a little bit about uh, uh, space observation. And then uh, come to how the Chinese uh, space industry started. Uh, of course, that's the foundation for us to make uh, space science uh, observations in space, uh, uh, orbit, in orbit and on satellite. And then I will talk a little bit about, uh, in general, that uh, what uh, we have done uh, since then. Uh, but uh, very briefly, uh, the last part is the most important part. I probably I will spend uh, half of my time talking about uh, current programs. Some of the programs has been already performed. Uh, the satellite is they are on on orbit and uh, making uh, observations, uh, tests, experiments, and uh, returning data. And so I will talk about those missions and uh, the, the, the preliminary results. And then uh, I will come to uh, later, the last, last, last part is uh, the future programs, uh, the current study we, ha we are doing, and the strategic uh, plans for the future. Uh, some uh, of the missions are also uh, and uh, very intensive uh, uh, studies. So that is uh, what I'm going to talk uh, uh, this evening or this uh, for this lecture. Uh, first of all, we come back to very early time in China. There are some uh, fairy tales. Uh, tales. One is uh, Chang'e, uh, a, a, a goddess, uh, a lady. Uh, she uh, fly, uh, flew to the to the moon and then stayed there. So the name of our lunar program is uh, named under uh, her name. So this is uh, Chang'e, uh, which is uh, a fairy tale from 2000 years ago. And another fairy tale is uh, called Kua Fu. Uh, this man, he uh, followed the sun all the time. And when the sun starts from uh, uh, east and uh, going to the west, so he went to the west all the time uh, until he died. So it's a uh, it's, uh, a kind of endeavor to uh, follow the sun. Uh, we have uh, also a program, uh, but now it stopped, uh, called Kua Fu. So this is uh, a very early time. But this is nothing to do with science. It's just uh, 
telling you that uh, the ancient people are interested of, of space. And the real observation uh, coming uh, uh, to uh, our field is uh, looking at the eclipse. So there's a record and uh, look at the new stars, new stars. And uh, even uh, at uh, Song Dynasty, which is uh, 1054 year AD, uh, uh, there's a very detailed record on a new star has been born. And during, even during the day, you can see it. And now it is uh, called Crown. Uh, you can still see it, but uh, using telescopes in space. Uh, the figure, the image you see at, on top of the right uh, top uh, corner is the, the image taken by Hubble Space Telescope, which is the same new star has been born 1,000 years ago and has been recorded in the Chinese history. Another part was the comet. Comet was considered was uh, uh, very unlucky stars, and when it's come, it always reflects some uh, some emperor died or some new uh, new uh, emperor born. So it was uh, some uh, signal, it considered as, uh, as a signal of, uh, of the governors. So the, the emperors in the old time put a lot of men to watch the sky and record uh, the, the, the comet. And you can see in the figure there are different kind of tales. Uh, some are very strange, but most of them, are, they are real. There are two, two or three sometimes. Uh, so this is a, uh, has been a more than 500 record of big uh, comets, uh, including uh, Halley Comet. And uh, of course, uh, looking at the sun, it's also uh, very important. So there are, uh, they use uh, dark glass uh, to look at the, the, the sunspot. And uh, this has been also uh, uh, recorded in the, in the historical book many times. And even uh, there's a, there's a image, there's a, in, in 2001, there's an unearthed uh, uh, pattern, which is uh, made by gold. Uh, the right hand figure was 3,000 years ago in uh, Chengdu, Chen province. And you can see the sunbeams are rotating. This is a very strange, this is a uh, emulated uh, the solar wind coming out from the sun. Uh, of course, at that time, nobody knows solar wind, but uh, uh, probably they can see the CMEs or some kind of eruptions that, that when it goes out of the sun, mm -hmm. it's rotating. So this is also very strange. But those are very uh, not really signs. It's just uh, some stories about uh, the interests of the old people uh, are interested uh, to the history, uh, to the skies, uh, mainly the sun, moon, and uh, stars, co cosmic uh, comet, and uh, eclipse, and uh, uh, all these kind of things, and even aurora. Yeah, I didn't mention aurora there. A lot of auroras. Uh, recorded in the historical book. So in the uh, in the modern time, uh, of course, uh, we have to uh, learn the, the uh, orbit uh, uh, dynamics. The first one, uh, uh, which is the father of Chinese uh, space industry or Chinese space programs, uh, Mr. Qian. Uh, he was a student, uh, one of the brilliant student of uh, Feng Kamen. Von Kamen was a famous professor in the U.S. Uh, uh, in um, uh, Caltech, uh, California uh, Institute of Technology. And uh, he had uh, several students, uh, Chen is one of him. And uh, during the, after the Second World War, uh, Von Kamen has uh, brought uh, Ms. Chen with him, uh, went to Germany and to, uh, to, uh, to uh, learn uh, how the V2 uh, a rocket was made. So uh, Doc Chen was a very uh, key person and uh, from Kamen. Uh, so he then he went back, come back home in 1950s. So after 1950, he started the Chinese uh, rocket or space uh, programs. So at that time, it was very difficult. You can see from the older pictures. So we consider in China 1956 are the funding of the Chinese uh, space industry. So we are uh, more than 60 years already. Another person 
uh, I have to mention is uh, related with space science is uh, uh, Professor Zhou. Professor Zhou, Jiu Zhang Zhou, he is, uh, he is the key person for the Chinese first satellite. Uh, of course, the proposal come uh, after the uh, Sputnik has been launched in 1957. So in 1958, uh, the Chinese Academy of Sciences has uh, uh, a program is called 581 Mission. And this mission is uh, aiming at uh, to launch, launch the first uh, Chinese uh, spacecraft. So uh, Professor Zhou has uh, led a team to study the uh, the plans and also make designs. But uh, at that time, it was so difficult. So only until 1964, uh, the real program has uh, 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 kick, kicked off. So he wrote a letter to a professor, uh, to a premier, Zhou Enlai. So uh, from there, the space industry, uh, uh, both rocket and satellite, has been divided. We have uh, a long march uh, vehicle theory. And here you can see all these ones are the current ones, from very small one, which is uh, uh, Changzhen with CZ to C. Uh, has the capability of uh, launching one ton uh, spacecraft into the low Earth orbit. And all the way up to CZ uh, Long March 5. Long March 5 was, has the compa compa capacity of launching 25 ton uh, payload into uh, uh, LEO. So, uh, and also of, of 14 tons into a uh, trans uh, into uh, this uh, uh, transfer orbit to GEO. So this is a this is a very big ones. And we had uh, uh, two uh, test, uh, three test launches, and the first two had some problem, and third one was uh, quite uh, successful. So this year, the next launch of uh, CZ five would be the Chinese Mars uh, mission uh, in uh, July this year. So it's coming very soon. And for the satellite uh, spacecraft technology, there are many, many progress in the past uh, 60 years. And we can make a very big satellite up to a five ton uh, uh, with a 5,000 kilowatt power, uh, very big solar panels. We have uh, ground test facilities up to uh, five meters in diameter, uh, the vacuum tube, uh, uh, thermal vacuum testing facilities. And uh, you can see in the right hand uh, uh, color up uh, corner, you will see the uh, moon um, simulators and the landing of the lunar uh, uh, spacecraft with a one of over six uh, gravity uh, test. So all these facility facilities has been uh, built up. So the capacity is very uh, strong now. And uh, with satellite, we have uh, mainly application satellite. We have mainly three series, Earth observation, communication, and navigation. For Earth observation, is mainly uh, weather satellite. Uh, there are two series. One is uh, even number, uh, which is uh, Feng, Yun, Feng Yun 1 and uh, Feng, Yun, uh, Feng Yun 2 and Feng Yun 4. And all numbers is uh, Feng, Feng Yun 1 and Feng Yun 3. The old number is uh, low Earth of it, and the even number is uh, uh, just just stationary Earth of it. So those are two different kind of series. So one and two are the first generation, and three and four are the second generation. Now we come to the second generation already, and here are some photos taken by Feng Yun two and Feng Yun four, and Feng Yun four has a very strong power. Uh, taking an uh, infrared image, even a little bit down into the cloud uh, to see the uh, uh, typhoon. And uh, with the communication satellite, it starts uh, with a real communication uh, satellite, uh, Dongfang Hong DFH2, uh, which is uh, just stationary, and DF DFH3, 4, 5. So as I mentioned, uh, five is is the new one with a very big uh, capacities uh, with a 50, uh, more than fifty years uh, lifetime. 
and uh, there's also a lot of uh, applications like uh, during the Wintran earthquake uh, period, uh, we can set up a, a, a VSAT, a ground state, small ground station in a minute, even very, uh, very easy, very simple. And for navigation and uh, positioning satellite, uh, China is, has launched the last one already uh, this, uh, this month. So uh, it's called the Beidou system. And it's a very similar as a GPS uh, second generation. And uh, now we have uh, 35 satellite, 5 GEO, 3 inclined GEO, and 27 MEO. So now can provide a global service. Uh, this is the last one uh, on the 9th of April. Uh, after this one, everything is, uh, is launched. So it's a complete uh, system already. And concerning the manned space program, uh, we have, uh, uh, it has been more than 20 years already. So uh, we have uh, first uh, had some launches uh, unmanned and start from the fifth launch. Uh, the first astronaut, Mr. Yang Liwei has been uh, in space. Uh, he's the first Chinese uh, launched by our own uh, spacecraft. Uh, so that was done in 2003. So we have major three steps, and that's the first step uh, into the send a human into space and come back safely. And second step is uh, is uh, uh, is uh, EV, EAV, ex vehicle activities, and then the third is docking and uh, and uh, so there's a uh, orbit docking. So those has been accomplished already. So now our program is coming to the second phase, which is the, the second step, uh, which is uh, which is a uh, space station. And for the lunar exploration, which is the first time China uh, left the Earth going to the deep space, although the moon is uh, cannot be uh, uh, called real deep space, but it is already uh, left the left the Earth orbit. So rotating about the moon and landing on the on the on the on the moon and uh, sample return from the moon. So those three steps. And now we are on the second step, which is Chang'e three. Chang'e three has landed with a rover, uh, but Chang'e four has landed on the far side of the moon. Uh, last year I was uh, performing very well. And uh, it actually, it is the backup uh, model of Chang'e 3. Since Chang'e 3 are so successful, and Chang'e 4 had uh, been uh, sent on the far side, so doing something more. And uh, this year, by the end of this year, we are going to launch, or maybe the general of next year, we are going to launch Chang'e 5, which is the third step. Uh, we intended to have a sample return, uh, but the capacity is a very strong with the with the orbiter and uh, rotating uh, uh, about the moon and uh, separating a lander uh, landing on the on the on the surface and then uh, uh, ascending a retrieval capsule from the surface of the moon and docking with the orbiter uh, which has been running waiting there and then separating from the orbiter and going back to the to the Earth and retrieve with a small capsule on the surface of the Earth. So it's quite complicated mission. And this will be launched by the end of this year or beginning of next year. So that's a lunar exploration. And for the manned mission is, uh, I have just mentioned, so we have uh, three major milestones. One is the first uh, man-made spacecraft, it was launched in 1970, uh, 24th of April. Uh, we are going to have the 50 years anniversary very soon, in next week. And then uh, uh, Shenzhou 5, uh, which sent Mr. Colonel Yang Liwei into space, uh, was the second milestone. And the third milestone is uh, Chang'e 1 uh, in 2007. So you can see from uh, spacecraft, uh, satellite, to a manned space mission and to deep space, there are three uh, major milestones. But until now, you don't see any space science. Huh? So 
I have to talk a little bit about space science. And very early space science are not a real uh, scientific missions, but some uh, uh, piggyback uh, instrument on board of a testing satellite. Uh, the satellite is testing a lot of technologies, and they say you can put some science instrument on board. So we put uh, some science payload on board of uh, of uh, some uh, experimental satellite. It's called Shijian series. For example, Shijian one is the copy of uh, Donghuang Hong one, which is uh, launched in uh, 71, 1971. The first time we have measured cosmic ray and X ray and uh, radiation dosers and all this. So it is a very preliminary. And Shijian two, we, there are some. Uh, more uh, uh, sophisticated test, and a lot of uh, uh, component has been tested, and the solar ultraviolet radiation meters, and so on. So this is a little bit uh, uh, larger uh, piggyback. And uh, Shijian 3 has been uh, failed, and uh, there's no Shijian 3, and Shijian 4 is, uh, is more coming to uh, uh, onboard uh, uh, environmental test in a geostationary transfer orbit. So this is a more, uh, before we launch the first uh, geostationary communication satellite, this one has been uh, going there and to measure the environment. So this is a Shijian 4. And uh, of course, it's also a uh, big back. And Shijian 5 is more interesting uh, uh, measuring a single particle event because uh, more and more, larger and larger computer has been used on the spacecraft and the memories, chips, and so on. And all this need to know uh, how frequently you will encounter a single particle event. Uh, will the memory will be uh, uh, destroyed by the, uh, the cosmic rays, and how much, how frequently uh, the memory will be affected. So Shijian 5 was uh, testing for that uh, together with some other technology. This is a small spacecraft. It's only 300 kilo. So, uh, so uh, this is, uh, we have uh, got chance all the way to 1999 that uh, to put our instrument on board. And uh, we got some chance later on to, to do a micro, microgravity and uh, life science experiment with a retrieval capsule uh, a satellite. And those kind of satellite has been used uh, originally for, for remote sensing. At that time, there's no large memory and no digital, uh, digital sensors, uh, no CCDs. So the image, the camera taking image on the films. So if you want to get the image, you have to retrieve the capsule and to develop the film. And so the, those kind of technology has been developed for that. And later on, because of the CCD and CMOS and all this digital transmission, you don't need to return the films. Therefore, uh, these uh, technologies uh, became, uh, nobody use it. So for space science, we need that because we want to send uh, experiment on board uh, in the microgravity uh, for fluent uh, physics, for, uh, combustion and for material science and life science and all these uh, we have uh, we can use it for, so on 2006 we use this kind of technology for science uh, this is a really a first science mission and uh, later on we have some other opportunities called Shijian 9 the number is not always uh, followed to each other but uh, we have uh, some other chance to test so this uh, Shijian series goes uh, continues. The real space science mission uh, proposed by scientists and uh, designed and also up, uh, developed and launched and operated by the scientists on uh, a program called Double Star Program. This program is a collaboration with the European Space Agency. Uh, from this figure, you can see that uh, uh, this is a collabor close collaboration with the European mission called uh, Cluster. Cluster. Cluster has a full spacecraft. They are flying together 
uh, with a distance between them uh, from a thousand kilometers to hundred kilometers, but they are flying like a fleet uh, together, uh, four point together, in a large elliptical uh, polar orbit. So the apogee could be 20 RE, and uh, which is the Earth readings, and uh, uh, the, uh, the perigee could be uh, uh, 4 RE, which is uh, um, 20,000 kilometers uh, higher orbit, so very far away from the Earth. And uh, the Chinese scientist uh, proposed uh, a two spacecraft mission, an image you can see the two green ones, uh, close to the Earth, and with one uh, running in an elliptical orbit, which is uh, very flat, uh, like uh, uh, over the uh, over the equator, and uh, 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 equatorial orbit. Another one is a polar orbit, which but is not so far away, so it's an inside cluster orbit. So this is six spacecraft measuring the geostationary, uh, measuring the magnetosphere. Uh, in a 66 point, the, which is the first time in the human beings, uh, they are using a very similar instrument because a cluster has been launched first. And then uh, there are some uh, spared instrument and uh, donated to the Chinese uh, double star program. So on the Chinese double star program, 50% of the science payload are coming from European Space Agency. So we are measuring the same physical parameters as cluster uh, together at a six point in the magnetosphere. And then you can say that uh, because uh, we have so many points, when the magnetosphere uh, changes with the solar wind, uh, we can recognize uh, how they are changed. So for a dynamic uh, magnetosphere, to use multiple point measurement is very useful. So this is uh, the first real science program uh, in China. It was uh, launched in uh, 2003 and 2004, and uh, both uh, are with 300 kilo, and uh, one uh, running for one year, one and a half year, and we are still using the data now. It has uh, magnetometers on board, uh, plasma, detectors and so on. So the, uh, the, the, the suit of instrument are quite complete. Yeah. So uh, because of the 60 point measurement and the collaboration with the cluster team, our double star team and uh, cluster team has won uh, 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 a very big award given by International Academy of Astronautics, IAA. IAA gave a, a team award, it's called LORAS for team achievement every year. And uh, among them there are uh, MIR stations, for example, space shuttles, and uh, very big missions like Hubble telescope. They are all international collaboration missions. And uh, Double Star and the Cluster uh, team has won this award uh, in 2010. So which is uh, very well recognized by the international community. And uh, of course, there are some uh, uh, good, uh, uh, good uh, discoveries also by the Chinese uh, lunar program. Uh, this one was uh, recently published on Nature and it's uh, a uh, result coming from uh, Chang'e 4. And Chang'e 4 was landed on the far side, the first time for the human beings landing, uh, put a lander on the far side of the moon, and uh, which is in just inside of the von Karman crater, and uh, the, the, there's a rover. The rover goes uh, 300 meters now uh, from the landing point, and uh, measured a lot of uh, 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 new, uh, found a lot mm -hmm. of new phenomena, and the new discoveries has been made, and it has been published on Nature. Uh, we have uh, 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 very soon a Chinese uh, space station. And this uh, Chinese space station will start a performance by uh, 2002. And this year, or next, beginning of next year, we will launch the first co-modular 
Uh, like International Space Station, we have to launch the core modular. And after that, uh, we have uh, to uh, docking with the two experimental models, modulars to it. So it's a T-cross small station. Compared with the International Space Station, this one is uh, quite small. Uh, in total, it's uh, 66 ton. And, uh, but uh, we can carry a lot of experiment on board. So very recently, there was a call for uh, uh, issued by United Nations and China and, and Chinese Manned Space Agency and uh, calling for ex science experiment on board. So this is also a very good chance for us to do space science. But you can see lunar mission and uh, manned space uh, mission are not really uh, proposed by the scientists. They are proposed by the government and then we do experiment on board. So we are taking advantage of these uh, national program, programs and the future missions of space science. So as you see, we have uh, only one real space science satellite mission it's called Double Star. And after that, we have, uh, we have uh, almost nothing for 10 years. Since 2003 to uh, uh, 2012, mm. we have no uh, government money for making a space science satellite. So during this peer, period, we have uh, made a lot of uh, proposals and studies and strategic studies and to fund, uh, to uh, apply fund from the government. And uh, because of that, we have uh, to tell the government how important space science is. Uh, space science, uh, the topics of space science are black holes origination or evolution of the universe, dark matter, dark energies. And you can see all these topics are really frontiers. They are either macro to, uh, to study the universe or macro, or macro uh, 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 Copic is, uh, is looking at the uh, particles, uh, dark matter particles and to, so, so those are the frontiers of science, natures. So we have uh, to tell the government, if you put money on space science, you can really have breakthroughs on uh, very fundamental science. So, and also we have, uh, uh, during the strategic study, we have tell the Chinese uh, central government that we were aiming mainly uh, with the two uh, science themes. The first one is how did matter originated, how does it uh, evolve and uh, move? This is more on universe and uh, uh, macrogravity and all the nature, law of the nature. And second is more close to our life is the relation between the solar system and the human beings. So it's more on space weather or, or Earth science uh, to look at our Earth and to study the relation between the sun and our human beings. So those two things uh, has been evolved, uh, elaborated into a scientific questions. For example, how did the universe originate and how does it evolve? How did life originate and how does it evolve? And what is the fundamental law of matter motion and the law of the life activities in space environment? And for each of these major science questions, we have sub-questions to be asked. So all this will drive the ideas of the community, space science community, okay, to uh, propose their missions. And with the second thing, we have also three major uh, questions, science questions. For example, what is the nature of the solar activity? Uh, can we uh, uh, predict uh, the solar eruptions? And what is the or orange and involvement evo of the solar system and the relation with the sun. Uh, we have uh, eight uh, planets. Uh, some of the big planets has uh, more than 70, 60, 70 uh, small uh, satellites running with the planet. So all these systems, how do those systems uh, form and uh, will evolve and uh, is there any life there? Uh, so how does the, the Earth system is evolved? So we are facing a, a global change. And what, why? Uh, and what is the direction of this global chain? Is it going to be too warm or too cold? And all these come with uh, some sub-questions. 
So with with this uh, major goal, and we have uh, got uh, uh, government support to uh, do some new missions. And this money is given under the title of a strategic priority program on space science. And we have uh, enough money to support four science satellite missions and some pre-studies. And uh, uh, those uh, four missions are uh, dark matter, particle explorer was launched in 2015 and uh, it's also another name for the monkey king in Chinese is Wukong. And the second launch was uh, was uh, uh, called Shi uh, Jian Ten, which is uh, we are still using the Shi Jian series. But Shi Jian Ten is a uh, is a uh, microgravity and life science with a retrieved capsule. It was launched in uh, uh, April uh, 2016, and uh, the capsule has been uh, in space for two weeks and then retrieved afterward. And uh, in that uh, same year, we have uh, launched uh, uh, quantum experiments in space scale. So it's called Quest. And this mission, uh, I will come to, to the result later on. Uh, uh, this mission is a very fundamental uh, science uh, research. And then last one uh, in this uh, program is uh, a hard X-ray modulation telescope. This is an observatory, astronomical observatory, and launched uh, in 2017. So those four missions has been uh, very successfully developed and uh, launched, and now in operation. Uh, apart from Shi Jianten has been retrieved, all the other three are in good shape, and we have even extended the lifetime uh, of uh, Damp and Quest and uh, they are running, still running in space, even after their design lifetime. And for example, dark matter uh, is, uh, is a satellite with a 550, uh, with a, with a 1,400 ton, uh, 800 ton, and 1,400 other detectors. So it's mainly a detector with some solar panel and some control unit. So it's called Monkey King, and uh, it has a, a science objective to find and study dark matter particles. In fact, it's a measurement of uh, 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 indirect measurement of dark matter uh, particles. It's mainly measuring the very, very high energy cosmic rays. And once you have that, you could analysis the dark matter. You can see from the figure here that the detector are four layers. The first layer is a synthesizer, plastic synthesizer, and second layer is a silicon uh, tungsten tracker, tracker, and the major one is a BGO uh, crystal uh, colorimeter, and the last one is a neutral detector. So there are four detectors uh, put uh, on top of each other. And when the particle comes in, and uh, you can see this uh, emulation, when the particle comes in, it will uh, hit the uh, different uh, crystals or different detectors. And uh, once the detector was uh, hit, it will give you a light. And so there's a sensor on the end of the detector to tell you which, uh, which uh, crystal has been Heat, and then we can retrieve the trees where this uh, particle is come from and which type of particle and uh, what is the energy range. So this is a, a very basic uh, principle of this, uh, of this uh, detector. And you can see the satellite itself is only uh, 1.8 ton, but the detector itself is 1.4 ton. So this is a, a very uh, heavy detector. And here is the result uh, up to, uh, I think it's uh, last year, and uh, you can see the red dot, uh, the curve uh, made, made by the red dot is given by DAMP, by this uh, mission. And this mission measured much better result in the high energy range, up to 1,000 GeV. Above 1,000 GeV, there's almost nothing 
and only damp is giving a good measurement. And it confirmed this, uh, this uh, uh, falling down of the energy, uh, high energy particles. Uh, why it is like the curve is like that? So there are many theoretical physicist analysis uh, telling that it's because of dark matter. So this uh, uh, study is still going on. And uh, particularly interesting is you see there's a one red dot is uh, at uh, about 1.2 uh, TeV, uh, 1,200 GeV. Uh, there's a jump. Uh, this jump uh, shows something. And uh, the, the data is still collecting, and uh, the error bar is getting small and small. So um, new publish publication is coming up. So you can see this uh, little gem and a lot of argument on this little what it is. So it may be reflect the dark matter is very close to our solar system. So there are several papers that have been published on, uh, uh, on a very good, uh, high, highly uh, uh, impact uh, journals like uh, Nature and uh, 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 APR and so on. So there's more than 20 publications already. This is a figure I have just saw. And this is, a, if you count how many data has been collected, how many cosmic rays has been, even has been collected, is 6.1 billion cosmic rays up to last year. So that, that is why it's capable to make the curve as nice as what it is shown here. This is proton, a curve of proton. So it's uh, much better than other missions. And I come to the second mission a little bit on the result. The, the, this mission is called Shi uh, Jian which is a retrieved uh, capsules. And uh, there you can see after two weeks, the capsule has been retrieved. You see it's very big, I can compare with the human there. And uh, in the desert in, in the Mongolia area. And, uh, and uh, there are 19 experiments on board. Uh, half of them are physical experiment, another half uh, biological and life science. So uh, we have, uh, uh, there are more than 11, uh, I think it's more than half, so it's 11 uh, uh, experiment has been retrieved on the capsule. And the rest is remaining uh, in, the, in orbit, but their experiment has already been finished. Uh, I show uh, only uh, two uh, Result, uh, the first one is you can see there are cylinders uh, and liquid inside the cylinders. And uh, uh, the temperature of the cylinder are different. So the, how the liquid is, uh, the, uh, how, the party, how the material is moving from, uh, from inter internal uh, to the external uh, cylinders, uh, there are, in fact, there are waves, standing waves and traveling waves. This is very interesting and has been published. And uh, all the results from this 19 experiment has been published. More than 200 papers and even uh, two uh, volumes uh, of a book. And this is another interesting uh, 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 result from this Shi uh, Jian Ten. It's uh, life science. You can see the Ambrose uh, coming from um, uh, little mouse, and uh, half of them has been saved in freezer uh, on the ground. And uh, at the very beginning, they are all in the, on the ground, and half of them has been taken uh, five hours before launch on board of Shi Jianten, and the rest let them growing on the ground. So we compare those two group uh, groups of uh, Ambrose, and you can see after some hours, 80 hours, it developed itself from one cell to two, two to four, four to eight, and so until uh, it can really grow. So this has been so successful uh, the first time to do it in space. Before people have done it in space station and never succeed. So uh, the very immediate reaction is it developed slower than on the ground. So in space, develop slower. And uh, the third mission we have launched in this uh, series is called uh, uh, Quantum Experiments in Space Scale. 
uh, it's a very interesting fundamental uh, spacecraft. It has uh, several purposes. One is to uh, deliver uh, quantum keys uh, over long distance to different stations. The second is to deliver to transmit uh, intangible uh, photons to two ground stations. And the two ground stations are separating more than 1,000 kilometers away. So we, we know that uh, the, if the photons are in the status of entanglement, if you have one of them is uh, changing their status, you measure them, and the other one will react the same. So it's called entanglement. But it has never done to test the entanglement over large distance. And on the ground, you cannot send the entanglement photons uh, on the uh, fibers, optical fibers, because it will destroy it. And in space, we can use a free space to deliver that and to measure them on two ground stations. And these two ground stations are 1,000 kilometers apart. So we did really discover that they will still remain in entanglement and reacting almost in real time, in no time. So this is a very interesting experiment. It shows that the law of entanglement is not limited by distance. It can be very, very far away. And even the light cannot transmit from this one to the other one. And they already uh, react. So it's uh, much faster than the speed of light. And the mission has been launched, uh, uh, operated uh, very successfully. And now it's going to be four years this year. And we have extension of it already. And in fact, after after uh, uh, one and a half years, uh, even one year, all the experiment has been done very successfully. Now they are doing uh, intended uh, uh, experiment together with uh, with uh, Austria to do a long distance cross continental uh, quantum key delivery. And those are some very interesting photos taken over time. You can see the beam uh, pulse are transmitting over time uh, with, uh, with, uh, with uh, laser beams. And the, the publication more than 10 are all on very top level nature science, uh, more than 10 uh, publications uh, already uh, to telling, to explain the uh, experimental uh, of the result. And you can see this is uh, over the continental quantum key transmission, and uh, from Beijing to Vienna, and you can you can use this uh, quantum key to do uh, uh, communication, and this communication is uh, really uh, very safe. So, so this is a uh, uh, fourth mission, uh, third mission, and the fourth mission is uh, our hard X-ray modulation telescope. This is an observatory. So anybody interested to use it can uh, uh, apply and send a proposal and the, uh, the committee can review it. And then uh, if your idea is good, they will turn the camera into that direction you have uh, required. And the cameras are mainly in the uh, energy range of one to 250 keV. So this is a, a particularly to the high end, to, uh, to more than 100 keV has never been measured before. So this uh, uh, is a very unique and with, uh, with this not a very sophisticated uh, detectors, uh, but uh, uh, they are, there are m very interesting uh, uh, imaging technologies to take a high resolution image. So those are the uh, four detectors uh, the, the space environment monitors are compensation the background. And this mission, just right after it was launched, uh, even at the commissioning phase, it was uh, just encountered with uh, the event of uh, the gravitational wave uh, measured by LIGO on the ground. So HXMT has participated in this measurement. Uh, we turn our camera into that direction and then uh, measured in this bandwidth, this energy 
bandwidth of this uh, event. But in fact, it doesn't. The the this uh, uh, emerge of the black holes doesn't go really that high energy band. So we didn't measure. We didn't find anything. But it shows this kind of uh, merging uh, or, or gravitational wave will not generate high energy uh, X rays. So those are the measurements uh, showing uh, at uh, X uh, at this uh, bandwidth. Some other uh, result is coming out, and the publications are coming up now. Uh, so after one year, and uh, APG and uh, and some other good journals has uh, uh, has already published uh, more than twenty papers uh, from this satellite. I think it has uh, after commissioning it has uh, less than two years the, uh, of, of observations only. So that is the program we have con uh, conducted in uh, the past five years, and. Uh, uh, now we are coming to a period of new missions, and you can see those are the really re those are really science missions. But they are doing uh, science uh, uh, research, uh, and for the new missions, we we cannot stop there. We have to continue. So we have a, a call for new missions, and uh, we have a new selections, and uh, we have uh, four missions has been selected for implementation. And six missions has been selected for intensive study, and two missions has been selected for even more intensive studies because they have been supported. They have done already uh, two or three years intensive study already. Uh, it's just too big, so they are waiting for uh, more money coming in for implementation. So those are the period for 2018 to 2020, 28, uh, 22. Uh, the four missions has been uh, approved, and now is under development. Uh, one of them is going to be launched this year. Uh, uh, Einstein Pro, I will come later on one by one to the details of them. Uh, very simply to tell you, telling you the uh, science objectives. The second one is advanced solar uh, observatory from space. The third one is a solar wind magnetometer magnetosphere and the ionosphere link explorer is called SMILE. And this one is particularly interesting. It's a collaboration for, for collaboration with the European Space Agency. And the last one is a gravitational wave high energy electromagnetic counterpart O sky monitor, very long name. It's called uh, GCAP. So I will come a little bit uh, detail to uh, each of them. Einstein probe is aiming to measure the variation of the universe, so time domain, because it has a long duration of uh, uh, exposures. So looking at the one sector of the sky for 20 minutes, and then turn the camera to another sector of sky for another 20 minutes, so within these 20 minutes, we are bound to see something, because there are always star born, always star die, and mm -hmm. always uh, emission changing. Uh, in X-rays, so uh, you can uh, uh, study that and uh, discover a lot of new things. So the science goals is uh, carry out a systematic survey of a software X-ray, uh, transient and variabilities of the universe X-ray sources. So uh, why can we do that? It's a new, uh, has never been used, a new payload. This is this payload is called a wide field X-ray telescope. Uh, it's using uh, a technology like a gloss per eye, a uh, 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 lobster eye, so small tubes and reflecting the incoming X-ray, and then uh, 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 then there's a detector uh, for that. And uh, once it found something, it will turn a follow-up X-ray focus. X-ray telescope with a very small field of view, but a high spatial resolution, and to take a further image of it in the center of it. So there are two kind of cameras. Uh, both are in uh, X-rays. And the second uh, mission uh, under development. Uh, this uh, this uh, uh, 
this uh, I come back to this uh, Einstein prop. There are some international collaborations. So Germany is participating, Italy is participating, and in the coordination by ESA. So it's a Chinese lead international mission. Uh, the second uh, mission under development is uh, uh, ASOS. It's a solar mission. And this will be the first Chinese solar mission. And this mission will look at the sun and particularly study the relation between CME uh, flares and magneto field. So those three are the key uh, element, physical parameters that will give you, uh, will reflect the changes of the sun and then uh, maybe a good sign of the space weather forecast. So there are uh, the uh, different uh, uh, payload, there are three, four different kind of payload, and then the payload mass is 300 kilo, and then the rest is, uh, is uh, similar, and then they make, uh, uh, it will use a 702, 720 kilometer uh, morning and down uh, solar synchronized uh, orbit, um, always looking at the sun, and uh, only a few, uh, in, in one year, there's only one month that uh, there's some blockage of, this, of the Earth. So the third mission is uh, uh, for the AISOS, I come back, AISOS is a mainly Chinese mission. And the third mission is a SMILE. It's, a, it's a mainly going to using a very, uh, you can see from this image that uh, using very high elliptical orbit and uh, looking down, taking image of the uh, image of the of the uh, aurora and also the magnetic pulse, which is in front of the of the Earth uh, towards to the sun, and uh, there is the encounter part, uh, encounter area of the solar wind and the magnetosphere. So we want to take an image of it. And uh, how can we take image is because there's some energy exchange between the oxygen and the solar wind uh, electrons. And once they have energy exchange, they will emit X-rays. So using X-rays can take image of that part. And, uh, <clears throat> and uh, this mission has been, uh, the payload has been one of the key payload uh, uh, soft uh, X-ray imager are provided from UK and uh, UVE, uh, which is uh, taking camera, camera uh, taking image of the of the aurora, is provided by Canada, and then the rest are provided by China. And the mission was developed uh, in uh, in uh, the the spacecraft was developed in China, and the payload uh, part uh, with the two international payload. Uh, developed at, you know, at the European Space Agency, and we put these two together and uh, ship it to uh, French Guiana and launch it in Kulu launch base. So using uh, European Space Agency launchers. So you can see this is very much integrated uh, international collaboration mission. And uh, the last one under development is called uh, 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 a gravitational wave uh, counterpart, OSCAE uh, camera. And you can see on top of the small spacecraft, uh, the spacecraft is very small, it's uh, uh, roughly uh, 200 uh, kilo. And then you can see a lot of detectors with a very huge, uh, wide field of view. You can see uh, it's more than 200 degrees, the field of view. So they have even an overlapping area. So once these two spacecraft launch and operating in one orbit plan, but uh, in counter, in a <clears throat> complementary 100 degree apart, 108 degree apart, and they will cover all sky. So whenever there is a X-ray uh, exploration, a gamma ray exploration, uh, this, uh, this uh, uh, spacecraft, this uh, system can measure it. So, which means uh, if there's any uh, measurement result from LIGO, from the ground gravitational wave, 
we will watch the direction. We will not miss the direction uh, of, of that uh, event. So once it has uh, uh, high energy electromagnetic emission, we will measure it. So this is uh, for that purpose. And this mission is a shortcut, uh, not so big. So it is going to be uh, completed. Uh, the development will be finished by the end of this year and we will launch it and uh, not middle of this year, end of this year. And uh, now it's uh, in full speed uh, for the flight model development. There are two spacecraft of them. So we have some new mission studies uh, like EXGB, TIG, and I, I have no time to come to each of them, but uh, they are all preparing for new selections, new round of selections. For example, there's a big mission uh, with uh, many international collaborations for much higher capacity for X-rays, the gravitational wave, with a very long uh, interferometry arms, much longer than the ground LIGO measurement system. So which can measure the low frequency gravitational wave. And Taiji-1 has been the first step, has been uh, performed only for technology. And we have proposed the MIO to LEO quantum experiment. It's another exchange of a quantum experiment in space scale satellite. And we have a small body sample return mission uh, from uh, asteroid. Uh, we have ultra-long wavelength uh, astronomical observation arrays. So uh, this is uh, going to be launched in, uh, uh, in on the far side, on the lunar orbit. Once it's running the far side of the moon, it measures a low frequency radio and taking image of the early age of uh, cosmic dawn. So uh, at the microwave, uh, uh, after the right shift, it goes down to the uh, long wave, uh, low wave, uh, ultra long wave already, which is a megahertz already. So, but it's reflect, reflected the early universe neutral hydrogen emissions. And we have also a, a habitable planetary exoplanet survey mission and uh, using a astrometry method to measure uh, the movement of uh, uh, home star, uh, which is uh, another sun, and uh, once there's a, a planet rotating around it, it can reflect uh, uh, reflected by the movement of this star. So if we ha can measure up to 10 uh, uh, to uh, 0 0.1 uh, macro arc second, we will be able to do that. And uh, we will be able to, we will looking at only the nearby stars within 10 PC. So which is uh, about uh, uh, 30 uh, light years and to find, to survey all these uh, nearby stars and to see whether there's a uh, uh, Earth's brother there. And we have another study is called magnetosphere, atmosphere, thermosphere coupling, and this is aiming to say the particle uh, relations, couplings between atmosphere and uh, uh, magnetosphere. So you see we have uh, so many uh, science missions and development and also uh, at, uh, at uh, uh, studies. Yeah, so this is a roadmap of all these uh, developed mission and on the left is in operation. In the right hand side is under development. And one of them is going to be launched this year. And for lunar future, uh, after the sample return, there will be a polar uh, lunar experiment, uh, mainly looking at the South Pole. And uh, it will be land there and there's a hopper uh, from the lander going to the permanent dark area to see if there's a uh, water and then uh, uh, get sample back also from there. So for Mars, the, this year we will launch a new Mars mission and uh, uh, it has a, a lander, also an orbiter, and from the lander there's a, there's a rover, but sample return will come later.
this year's only uh, orbiter and lander. And of course, for manned mission, I have mentioned it's going to be a Chinese manned space station, and uh, we are on the. We have already finished completed the second step. Now we are on step three. So on step three, there will be a lot of experiment on board. It's mainly for utilization. So there will be a lot of chance for scientists to making microgravity and life science experiment, and even external instrument looking at the Earth for, for to test the Earth observation, remote sensing, new instrument. <clears throat> So as a re remark, China is a space country, but only in recent years, space science missions became an independent activity. Before we have only a piggyback. Now we have independent space science missions. Discoveries, publications are the most important science output to evaluate the successfulness of science missions. Yes, uh, we, if we call it a space science mission, it has to be uh, evaluated by discoveries and publications, not uh, just launching into orbit. We need to see the discoveries. Of course, if all space science missions, international collaboration is added on to promote a space science mission. If you do it on your own, it gets less chance to be supported. It's better, always better, to have international collaboration. There are many reasons, huh? so I have no uh, time to explain, but uh, it's add on. Of course, more and more questions about the nature should be answered by space science missions in the future, because uh, it, it, the answers are more and more difficult. If you don't have a new instrument, if you don't go out of the atmosphere, you cannot answer them. So space science is one of the area can make breakthroughs in the future. So it is a very important area for, for China, uh, for a country like uh, China, a big country. We need to take the responsibility for the human beings and to discover the nature and to make a fundamental breakthroughs on uh, fundamental research. So that's uh, close my uh, short talk. And uh, I leave uh, now uh, two questions for you. If you are interested, you could send answers to me. The first question is, what do you think is the most important selection criteria on space science mission proposals? We are facing a lot of proposals now. Every call, uh, if we issue a call, we got uh, dozens of, sometimes more than 100 proposals. What do you think um, is the most important criteria, selection criteria? Because so many missions. So this is a very interesting question. I uh, think you may have your own ideas, but uh, we, we have, uh, for those years, uh, we have some of our, our own uh, principles. And second question is also interesting. What, uh, why space science is important to a country? And how much percentage it should take in its overall space budget? Yeah, as I said, China is only in recent years we have space science mission. Before we have only piggyback. So there's no independent program. Now we have independent program. But how much budget Percentage we, we will take uh, from the overall space budget. What do you think? So this is uh, another question that uh, uh, I'm asking you. So if you are interested, you could uh, uh, come up with uh, with uh, send emails to to us, and uh, we can uh, uh, we can uh, I will try to answer you or uh, to to reply to you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you very much, dear professor. Um, Hello, yes. I, yes. I think I, I finished a little bit early. I think it's okay. Otherwise, the student gets too tired. 
Well, it was a very, very nice uh, lecture and um, that was very interesting and colorful and I hope that um, um, most of the students uh, would be very interested in um, the questions that you asked and we're waiting for their answers and as soon as I uh, get them we will send uh, these answers to you and maybe we will okay. continue. Okay. Thank you Good. very much. Okay, Good thank day. you for the arrangement. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.